feel like all the Wednesday videos are going to start out like this now. <laughs> As Sadie would say, it's new hardware day. No, these are not ASICs, but today I have a couple boxes of hardware that I actually bought in December. And I said no rush at the time, and I meant it, but it's finally here. So let me get these inside, let's open them up, and I'll show you guys what I bought. And within the Bitmain boxes reside a bunch of priority mail envelopes, which are not being used correctly, but I'm definitely not a narc. Anyway, let me open these up. As you can tell, they are definitely graphics cards. But what graphics cards, you ask? Well, let's find out. So, what most of this box is, is these. They are XFX Triple Dissipation 5700 XTs. And then also, I think I have seven of these ASRock Challenger 5700 XTs as well. These are all Micron, but a good number of these are Samsung, but they all have completely roasted fans. So, I only brought fans down for the Challengers today because I want to get three of those working in the server case I have down here already. But yeah, they are they are roached, and as you can tell, they have spun so far. They've actually started eating into the fan blade from the heatsink. And the funny bit is they've been eating into each other as well. So it's actually removed the serial number from this card, which is handy dandy. But anyway. Yeah, I don't even remember how many I bought, but it, it, there's a lot of GPUs in here that I straight up don't need. These truly are shockingly bad. <laughs> so anyway, these have already had fan replacements, it looks like, at some point, and the tabs have also been broken on a lot of these shrouds. A couple of them are so bad where I think they'll probably just live as D-shroud cards, but I grabbed four that at least had one good fan screw holding the shroud in, so anyway, these, I'm going to be able to take the three screws out of each fan hub and then take the shroud screws out of the back of the heat sink stack. I said there's missing ones already, and a lot of these tabs are completely hosed already. But let me take these apart, and let's do fans on three, well, four, four of them. So when I mentioned the fans had been done already, uh, I'm not actually sure if that's true. I just figured they had because it looked like these had actually been taken apart before, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't think they would have gone to the trouble of making this look nice. So maybe not. These might be original. Well, there's the original fan model for you there. 2019, 816. Yeah, I think those are original. They're pretty disgusting. And the new ones came with this weird extension cable, which I don't think is necessary, but... We do have to split them apart to get the companion cable through this hole, and then everything actually went okay. I don't have a magnetized screwdriver down here, which is making this a huge pain, but we can at least get these installed, and hopefully they work. And there we have it. One uh, pseudo-refurbished ASRock Challenger. I'll be checking the temperatures and the stability on these to see if they need to be repasted. Uh, I don't have, I don't think enough paste down here, unfortunately, to repaste them right now. I guess I can double check on that, but the new fans definitely have long enough cables. Oh, shoosh. Looks like I didn't fully stuff that in. Urgh. I'll have to push that connector down. Sorry, I'm not even able to see it. I'll have to push that connector down just a little bit more, but yeah, everything fit okay. So the Alibaba fans seem all right. Wow, I just realized how warped this card is. Holy God. Oh, this poor thing, man. If it still works, that's incredible. I'm guessing it does, and it probably is just in full sag mode. What would that even mean? Uh, yeah, so I think it was fans facing up in the server case. Wow, okay. I'll have to keep that in mind. I don't know if I want to stress it the other way. <laughs> poor thing. These had a rough life. Also, a night, uh, nice neat trick on a screwdriver, if it ever becomes demagnetized, all you have to do is find a magnet and drag the screwdriver in a line across the magnet over and over again, like ten times, and it's magnetized again. Ta-da! Man, even with semi-proper tools, this sucks. Um, easy enough to redo, but I would say they take a little bit longer than those power color fighters, so... Anyway, this one's done. 
We got two more. Well, they certainly look better than they did. I set this one aside to actually come home with me because the shroud is attached on top and bottom. This is actually like the best condition one, even though apparently the bin isn't very good. I did pre-bin these before I bought them, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff these in the case right now. On the caveat, I think I have enough splitters to do that, but I might not. So anyway, let's go over there and see if I do. Well, annoyingly, and I even checked, I don't have enough splitters to make this happen. These older Octominer X12 Pros have enough strands where you need to split each one of them once to get five eight pins per strand. And unfortunately, I don't have enough to get this triple into these quads, even though down here I would be good to go. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Ugh, how annoying. Well, I've only got two more in here, and they're facing the wrong way. I mean, these PCBs are bent for fans facing up, so we'll see. But I'm going to put the lid on it and boot it up just to see if they register and if they mine. Well, we have 11 successfully mining Ergo just fine, so the cards are okay. Thank goodness. I just have to remember to bring two splitters down next time I come down here. I was trying to make a rig of all ex-Hawk blind guy GPUs, but unfortunately the Azeroks are not from Hawk. But you can see, obviously, the software reporting is way off between certain brands of card. These are not actually that much worse. But there's an even mix now of Micron and Samsung. Actually, I think it is 6 and 6. But they are mining just fine, so I'll just shut her down. But it's nice to know when I need a little bit of extra heat in here over the weekends and things like that, I can crank this on. We're pulling 1.13 giga hash on Ergo, which is pretty great. Well, I've got a couple of these new magics. I think I actually covered these with you guys when they showed up about a month and a half ago. But the main reason I have them down here is ultimately they are going to be filled up with these 5700XTs. I think. I do think that makes the most sense. Uh, I have completed a few more. So I've got three more Azrock challengers there. And I've got, I think, five? Yep, triple dissipations here. These all now have brand new fans. This one, I had to improvise and jam some screws very nastily in the side because the shroud just would not stay on. But I have to say, I think the, the actual fin stack is nicer <laughs> on the Challenger. These XFX cards look fantastic, but that heatsink right there, that's what you see is all it is. There's really not much to those. So anyway, I do need to uh, just make sure everything's working after repasting uh, most of these i think the bottom one i actually need to open up and repaste that one i swapped out the fans and i was able to do it without removing the fin stack <laughs> so judging by what i saw in there it could really use a repaste anyway i just want to make sure that these are functional after the maintenance so i'm going to get one of those cases going i'm going to flash a hive image onto it and yeah let's see if these change This one's okay. What a comedy of errors. I ended up spending over an hour on this, but it turns out there's a few things. So the new Magic cases from Nerd Gears are set to PXE network boot, and I had no idea. I had forgotten that. Uh, so all you have to do is reset the CMOS, and then they will come up. But I had to, of course, write a hive drive for it. And then I remembered that this thing only comes with four strands, and on those strands is a six pin and a six plus two. On top of that, the XFX triple dissipations are too long for this case. So I'm going to have to throw those in the, uh, the Octominers. Otherwise, I could put the fans on the outside of these cases, which is fine too. But anyway, we've got the challenges loaded. I'm going to get them mining just to make sure they work. They all went into fan stop, so I'm optimistic. But man, what a comedy of errors. I probably should have saved this case for those XFX 5700 XTs. Nice and deep, plenty of width. However, since I already took the liberty of dropping the video on Sunday for these CMP100-210s, or TF500s as I call them, I have decided to put my first 8 into this Nerd Gears foldable 8 GPU case and see what's what. So I just burned that MSATA drive. I got all the cards put in here, one splitter per card unfortunately, because that's just how this power supply is. But yeah, let's uh, tighten down the security bar. Put the lid on it, boot it up, and see if she mines. 
Good lord, the drama never stops. I actually did find one of the, one of the batch of XFXs appears to have decent fans. I have not pulled that one apart. <clears throat> but it looks like somebody else did at some point. Other than that, I have put new fans and I've repasted every single one of those. However, I miscalculated and I still have two more up here that I need fans for. I did pull out one fan from one of these cards that actually was still in pretty good shape. I do think that was a factory refurb, so it probably didn't have as many hours on it. But where I left off was the challengers. I'm going to pull these back out because they all need repaste, and then all the other ones in the other machine also need repaste. While I'm at it, I'm going to move the fans in this new magic to the outside. And I may not even put them back in because I really would like speed controllable fans in this case. However, I just want to be able to put the XFX cards in here to test them. So this case, we got it working uh, earlier in the video. I just want to make sure I can get these cards serviceable uh, for their future life as the uh, GPU mining profitability, so to speak, comes back and people start getting interested in it again. So you know, take the cards out, repaste them, put the fans on the outside, or maybe leave them out entirely pending some newer speed controllable fans. I'm not really sure yet, but let me get all that done and let's make sure all these cards I just sunk a ton of time and effort into work. Well, if you guys were curious what the Challenger looks like, it's kind of nice actually. It doesn't even risk the memory pads, which aren't leaking, so I'm not going to touch them, but they have their own heat sinks that get blow through air from the primary fin stack here. And yeah, the thermal paste was worse than any of the XFXs, so scraped it off with, again, man, these trim tools, they work great for taking thermal paste off the, uh, the actual copper um, heat conductors. Don't use them on the core, obviously, but Anyway, let's slap it back together. I'll do the other ones. I'll go get the other ones out of the rig, make sure everything is pasted up to perfection. We'll do some testing. Well, unfortunately, I lost track of the screenshot, so I can't really compare. However, it does look like the temperatures are better. The third one's not perfect, so I'm not sure which card that is, but I'm actually very impressed with how well they were performing with bone dry paste before. But this is certainly better. So I go throw the other three in the big octaminer and then we'll start throwing the xfx cards in here three at a time well we can see where i took out the azrox and put in three of the first xfx's they are all working just fine on ergo on that x12 which is great and i have the fans out of this one and i have the first three of the triple dissipations in here fans are all working great and you can see hash rates are good temps are good so i'm pretty happy with that overall